Okay, so this is the lecture part two for chapter four. And uh, so now we're going to study a few different uh, types of uh, chemical reactions. So the first type we're going to study is the precipitation reactions. Reactions between aqueous solution of ionic compound that produces an ionic compound that is insoluble in water are called precipitation reactions. And the insoluble product is called a precipitate. For example, uh, in this slide, we see a 2Ki plus uh, so two platinum iodide plus level two nitrate aqueous aqueous and in this picture. Uh, so we can see the uh, two solutions initially don't they don't have precipitate and then uh, uh, we mix, after we mix, uh, we see the produce the precipitate. Uh, so the precipitate is the letter to iodide uh, solid, and then the other product is uh, uh, plasium nitrate. Uh, no precipitation formation equals no precipitation reaction for the aqueous solution of ionic compound. Other type of reaction are possible. Uh, but for this reaction here, we, we don't see any chemical reactions. Uh, so these two reactants are Ki aqueous platinum iodide and then sodium chloride aqueous. Uh, so after we take these two reactants uh, and identify the ion, then we swap, swap the ion, then we get KCl aqueous then and Ai aqueous. So all the ions are still present. So therefore, this means uh, therefore, uh, so therefore, uh, no reaction, uh, no precipitating reaction, and in, in for this particular example, there's just no reaction at all. Uh, so those solutions on a, a molecular smaller view, uh, we will see in this uh, re reactant is the Ki. So we see those uh, ions, the smaller one, smaller circle is the K plus ion. The relatively big one is the I, Y native ion. And then those backgrounds, those are the water molecules. So in the beaker, initially we have a sodium chloride aqueous solution. So we see sodium ion are the purple, the green one are the chloride ion, the background are the water molecular. So after we mix, uh, we see this solution, mix the solution, we still have all those ions. The sodium ion still floating, and the platinum ion still floating. And so does uh, iodine, I1 negative and chloride. Uh, write uh, equations for the precipitation reaction. Uh, so in this example, you write equation for the precipitation reaction that occurs if any when solution of potassium carbonate and uh, nickel chloride are, are mixed. Uh, so you just translate those names first, and uh, so. Potassium uh, carbonate the K2CO3 aqueous, and uh, the other reactant is nickel 2 chloride, so NiCl2 aqueous. So, when it will produce? Uh, so, you ha we have to learn how to predict what it can produce possibly by uh, identifying the ions in this type of reactions uh, in the beginning reactant. Uh, so once you know the ions, uh, positive ion, negative ion, so they usually, um, the positive ion combine with the negative ion. So there's one positive ion in this reactant, which is nickel 2 plus, uh, it's going to follow the arrow to combine with uh, uh, the carbonate. Uh, so then uh, the possible product for this combination, it will be NiCO3. Uh, so then we will take the other uh, pair of ions. So you will have this K1 plus, and uh, then this Cl, uh, the K1 plus will follow the arrow to find uh, the other negative ion, Cl1 negative. So that's the possible product KCl. Um, so then you use the solubility uh, rule to decide uh, which one is the insoluble. If neither of them are insoluble, then we don't have a reaction. So KCl is soluble, 
uh, because the compound containing Cl are usually soluble, but uh, Cl combined with uh, Ag1 plus Ag2 plus or Hg2 2 plus is thin soluble. Um, so this K not in this example, so therefore KCl is still soluble. Uh, so therefore we write this KCl as uh, H equal. Then the other possible product is NiCO3. So NiCO3, we see the conclusion is insoluble. Why? Because compound containing CO3 two negative are usually insoluble. But when CO3 two negative combine with these few exceptions, then that becomes so, uh, become soluble. Um, so obviously this Ni not on this list. So therefore this NiCO3 is insoluble. So therefore we write S in solid, in the solid, not means soluble. So this means we have a chemical reaction. And uh, so that's how we predicting whether we have a chemical reaction or not. And obviously you want to balance the equation. If you want to balance the equation, you will keep these two reactants, then write a two here. Uh, so this is uh, how we write equations for the precipitation reaction. So in this, uh, CRA, you want to identify the solid product formed from the reaction of a silver nitrate with calcium chloride. Uh, so what do you do? Just uh, translate the name. So silver nitrate will be AgNO3. Uh, so the reactant that will give you uh, the, the right questions will be the solution, so therefore A equals uh, the next one will calcium chloride, so will be CaCl2 uh, aqueous. And then you just uh, decide what are the possible products by swapping the ions. So here we understand when you have the Ag, which means Ag1 plus, and then this will be angle 3, uh, 1 negative. And uh, then the other reactant, so you have Ca, so Ca is 2 plus, and then Cl is 1 negative. You don't have to worry about this subscript for now, just identify the charge for the ion. So then next you switch in, so, the, so a, if a, a, a keep it together with M3, nothing will happen. So sometimes A G floating around and has a possibility to bump into Cl. So therefore you will have that uh, Cl, and then Ag. So the other one will be the calcium, uh, possibly with uh, MO3. Uh, so, so therefore, when the Ag and the CO3 together, so they both one one, one positive one negative one. So therefore, you have AgCl. Uh, when the uh, calcium uh, uh, with uh, nitrate, so that's become like a two. So these are the two possible products, and then we decide which one is insoluble. Remember the rule is that anything has a nitrate, which is NO3, the soluble. Most of the time, the compound has a Cl, is soluble, but when Cl with Ag, that becomes insoluble. Therefore, we have this, uh, our uh, uh, product now. So one product is AgCl solid, and then other one will be C A angle uh, three two aqueous. Then you balance the equation because you have uh, let's say you you have two C L here, so you put a two here, and then you you need that make a two A G, so therefore you put a two here. So two A G two A G is okay. Two C L two C L is okay. One C A one C A. Then we have two nitrate two nitrate. So the equation balance. And then you finish the question, the question asks uh, which solid product produced, so obviously the solid product is AgCl, therefore the answer is, is B. Uh, next to CRA is identify the solid product formed from the reaction of potassium nitrate and barium chloride. So you just do the similar, identify the possible precipitate. Uh, so the first reactant is K, angle three uh, aqueous. The second reactant, the barium is Ba. So Ba is two plus and Cl one negative, so therefore BaCl2 uh, aqueous. 
So then you similarly use identifier. So here the K1 plus and angle 31 negative. In the other pair, uh, so you have BA2 plus and uh, CL1 negative. Don't worry about the subscripts uh, when you want to predicting the product. So what you uh, what you get will be swapping this BA with that, keep that. So therefore, you write BA and then you write CL. Then we go back to the other ions. So we have angle three. Uh, I want to use the red one. So angle three is Y negative. BA is uh, two plus. Therefore, we need a two angle three. To balance the charge between this BA and angle three. So the other one just one to one. And uh, by the solubility rule, so uh, most of the time the CL compound is soluble except when CL combined with AG or lead or mercury. So this is not one of them, so therefore this is aqueous means soluble. By the solubility rule, anything has angle three is soluble, so therefore it's aqueous. So therefore, we don't have a reaction because you produce these two also aqueous. So that means all the ion present before the reaction also present after the reaction. So even though you, if you write here, these two new combinations, but they are all aqueous. So that means they exist, or they exist uh, in the uh, solution as ion. So therefore, uh, no solid. So the answer is E. Um, so then this question, this CRA is what is the maximum number of gram of PbI2 precipitated upon mixing 25.0 gram, 25.0 uh, milliliter of 0.150 molar Ki with 15.0 uh, milliliter of 0.175 molar of uh, lead to nitrate. Uh, so uh, I give you a hint. You first need to write a balance equation and then find the moles of both reactants. So let's do that. Uh, so we will write the equation first. Now the, the, the problem I'll tell you two reactants. So the first reactant is Ki uh, equals the second reactant is a Pb uh, angle 3 2 uh, equals. So we swap in the ions as what we did before. So the possible product will be the Pb and the I2. Uh, so this, by the solubility rule, is, is insoluble, so therefore ask you how much this precipitate can produce. Then the other product will be the K and the angle 3 and aqueous. So you need a balanced equation. So to balance the equation, we can see right now we have two I here, so we therefore we will put a two here uh, and then we will put a two here, so the equation is balanced. Uh, next, the hint is uh, find the moles of both reactants. So to do that, we start with the given uh, volume and molarity. Actually, for this Ki, what do you do? You you convert the 25.0 milliliter into liters by using this one first. And then use molarity. The more I uh, we did it in the first part of the chapter four lecture. So whenever I have this uh, capital M, you can write this uh, information as a fraction. So one fraction will be uh, this more of a Ki. Uh, you over one liter of the solution. Uh, so this is very important, and you'll be able to get a fraction from the molar concentration. All right, so you can see if you write those uh, uh, in this way, see the meter liter, meter liter comes out, the liter comes out, you get more of Ki. Uh, 
So the model Ki you, you get is uh, 0 0.00375 more of uh, Ki. So we do a similar for the other reactant. We will start with uh, 15.0 liter liter. Uh, use the same conversion between liter and milliliter. So therefore, we have this. Uh, therefore, we have this uh, uh, reaction as the last reaction as the reaction before this one. Now, this uh, reaction we are going to do is for the lead two nitrate, which has this concentration. So that concentration can be written as uh, zero point one seven five more of uh, PB angle three two over one liter. So that gives us uh, zero point zero zero two six two five. Uh, moles of uh, PB angle three two. Okay, so now you have moles of uh, of both reactants. Remember what we did before is uh, uh, using the two moles of reactant and convert that into the product. Uh, you want to find out. So, so therefore, you just uh, use the more ratio between the two reactants and the product. Let's do the first reactant, uh, the Ki. So we have 0 0.00375 more Ki. So if we use the coefficient ratio from the equation, and uh, we want to cancel out the more of Ki. And then see what is the ratio for the product, which is the PB uh, I2. Okay, so PB I2 here and the Ki here, you see the coefficient of a Ki is 2. The coefficient of a PB I2 here means 1. So therefore, we get uh, uh, the more of the PBI2 from the Ki will be 0 0.001875 moles of uh, PBI2. Uh, similarly, for the other reactant, we'll start with 0 0.0026, uh, 0 0.0026 uh, uh, so two six two five more PB uh, not PB two PB angle three two angle three two All right so then you want to cancel out that Let's say just like PB and uh, angle 3, 2, and I also just write PB I2. So what is the coefficient for PB angle 3, 2? Here, 1. And uh, what is the coefficient for PB I2? Also, 1. So therefore, we get the same number 0 0.002625. Now uh, the unit become moles of uh, PB I2. That's so what we did in the first part of the lecture of chapter four. Then we compare which of these two numbers is smaller. So this is smaller. So then we'll use this one to convert uh, into the gram of the PB I2. So uh, obviously you need to know the molar mass of PB I2. Uh, let me just write out here, and uh, you can check the model mass of uh, PB I2 equals, uh, you take the mass of one PB, then the mass of two I dying, 
So you have 461.0 gram per mole. Okay, so we will take that smaller mole. Uh, so that will be our theoretical yield in moles, and then our Ki is our limiting reactant. So that's not that important for this reaction uh, for this question, uh, but you still want to know those uh, concepts. So now you have this much more of uh, PBI2, which is what is the precipitate, and use the model mass. So for every one more of a PBI2, and you have 461.0 gram. So after you count out more of uh, the PBI2, you get the gram, and this will give us how much gram? It will give uh, Okay, so 0 0.864 gram of PBI2. Okay, so therefore the answer will be A. Uh, so Next section, we are going to learn chemical reaction equations. Uh, many, many different ways to write the chemical reaction equations. Particularly in this section, we are going to learn three ways. Uh, equations which describe the chemicals put into the water and the product molecules are called molecular equations. For example, uh, 2KOH equals plus Magnesium nitrate aqueous produce um, potassium nitrate aqueous and produce also magnesium hydroxide solids. So this is the one type of equation we call that molecular equation. The next type is the equation which describe the active uh, of most of the uh, dissolved species are called complete ionic equation. Well, you notice uh, some of those uh, uh, common misunderstanding uh, or misconcept. So when you say complete means the equation contains all the ions from all the strong electrolyte. So if your electrolyte is weak, you still produce partially ion, but you don't write them as the ion because we go by kind of the majority rules. Uh, complete does not always mean to completely write every formula in the equation as ion. Only strong electrolytes are written as ions. So what is a strong electrolyte? So review, strong electrolytes are soluble ionic compounds, including strong bases. Uh, so this just totally one smaller group of SE, strong electrolyte, the other group will be the strong acids. All the others, uh, insoluble substance, weak electrolyte, and non-electrolyte are written in molecular form. So solid, liquid, and gases are not soluble, so therefore keep written in molecular form. Um, one example from this previous molecular equation, uh, so we, we, we rewrite the two reactants because both two reactants are strong electrolyte. So therefore this 2KO equals rewrite as 2K plus equals plus 2 hydroxide equals. And the second reactant in the molecular equation, you have MgMO32 equals, but in the complete ionic equation, you rewrite the Mg as Mg2 plus equals then you rewrite this angle 3, 2 as 2 angle 3, 1 negative equals. Uh, so then the, uh, the two product, one of the product is solid. So if you have a solid, liquid, or gas, definitely don't rewrite. Uh, only some of those equals, not all the equals. Right? Uh, 
So this aqueous and this is ionic. If if your aqueous is also ionic, then you rewrite. Uh, if your aqueous is strong acid, then you rewrite. Uh, so this is aqueous, this is ionic, we rewrite. So therefore, we have a two uh, K plus and two NO2 and negative aqueous. Uh, the last one again is solid. If you, are, you have solid liquid or gas, just keep it as it is. So this equation at the bottom is the complete uh, ionic. So obviously, you can see complete, that means everything is ion, so we still have the last product in the molecular format. Um, uh, ions that are both reactant and product are called uh, spectator ions. Uh, so in the example in the previous slide, we have the complete ion equation. You can identify some of those ions in the reactant and also in the product. For example, the, the two of the K1 plus and K1 plus. So before or on the left side of the arrow, and also on the right side of the arrow. So the other pair is angle three one negative or two angle three one negative aqueous. So these two ions are the spectated ion. An ionic equation in which the spectated ions are removed is called a net ionic equation. So for this equation, for this example, if we take this two pair of ion out, we get what's left over is two hydroxide and then one magnesium two plus then produce MgOH2 solid. So this is our net ionic equation. So now you see all the three equations we are going to start in this section. Start with molecular, then complete ionic, then net ionic. Uh, so consider the following precipitating reaction occurring in aqueous solution. You have a three uh, strong chemical chloride aqueous plus two uh, lithium phosphate produce a strong chemical phosphate solid than a lithium chloride aqueous. So you want to, what you want to do is write the complete ion equation and, and also net ion equation. So to do that, you remember uh, to get the complete ion equation from the molecular equation, you rewrite all the strong electrolyte, uh, which means some of those aqueous substances as ions. Um, so the first one is aqueous ionic. So if aqueous ionic, you rewrite. Uh, so the problem is how much ion you, you, you get. You, you just take the coefficient and multiply by those uh, subscript for the ion. So the first one, the coefficient is three. The subscript for SR is one, so therefore three times one is three. So here's one, right? So three times one equals three. Therefore, you have this three here. Uh, so the next one will be the Cl1 negative. So how many Cl1 negative? So what, what do you do? You will take the three times two. So three times two. So three is the coefficient, two is the subscript for Cl. So that is six. So that's where you get a six. Uh, next, uh, you will see this is the aqueous, this compound is ionic. So uh, uh, aqueous ionic, you read right as ion. So one ion will be the positive ion, the other ion will be the negative ion. So in this example, the positive ion is Li, then we know Li is a group of 1A, so always 1 plus. And um, so therefore you find out uh, how, uh, how many plus by those kind of uh, formula or by memory. Then you find out how many Li. So again, you take the coefficient, which is two, then times the subscript for Li, which is three, so you get six. So that's where you get this six. Uh, so then next, you want to see what is the negative ion. Uh, you have to memorize some of those uh, uh, polyatomic ion. So you don't separate the P and the O, you keep PO4 together as the phosphate. So phosphate, you have to memorize phosphate is three negative, and then how much you get, you have two coefficient, so two times one equals two. So that's how we get this two, and how we get PO4 three negative. So this is the polyatomic ion, and you memorize, 
in this kind of uh, precipitin reactions, they keep it together. So they, they don't separate into positive areas and oxide. Okay, so that finish rewrite the two reactants, and then you examine these two products. The first product is solid, never rewrite us in this process, never rewrite a solid uh, gas or liquid, just uh, keep as it is. Uh, the second product is uh, LICL aqueous, so it's aqueous possible, uh, but not all the aqueous, only those aqueous ionic. So this is ionic because L I is metal. So you just write, so in this one, as we, uh, uh, as probably you all know, the L I is one plus and C L is one negative. I just identify, identify how many. So again, you will take six times this one here, sub triple is six. Therefore, both of them is six and six. So this is the, uh, our complete ionic equation. Okay. Uh, so, so next you want to get the net ionic by identify the spectated ion. Okay. Uh, so spectated ion, who is the spectated ion? Let's uh, see, whoever is not in this, uh, that's all you by just you examine. Like on the left side, we have this. On the right side, I have this. So therefore, this will be crossed out. Uh, so next pair will be this CL. So CL here and CL here. So this also will be crossed out. After that, you still have three SR2 plus equals then two Q4, three negative equals. Then here the product that is precipitate. So this is uh, our uh, example. We have the complete ionic, then we have this net ionic. Okay? Uh, so that's how you. Uh, Solve those problems. So we have again, we have molecular on the top. So this equation is a molecular equation, and this equation is the complete ionic. The last one is the net ionic. Uh, so this uh, CRA four point one six. Uh, which of the following species will appear in the complete uh, ionic equation for the following reaction? So I only give you two reactants for this reaction. You have to be able to swap in the ion and get the possible product. So the first uh, reactant has Li1 plus, and the second reactant has Cl1 negative ion. So this will be the possible product. <coughs> then we identify the other possible combination, which will come from and this Mg2 plus with the OH1 negative. <coughs> so if OH is one negative and Mg is two plus, so therefore uh, we need a two hydroxide to balance the charge between Mg is two plus and OH is one negative. Uh, so then we decide their state. So we know. Uh, anything has Li is soluble, so therefore the aqueous. Most of the time, hydroxide is insoluble, uh, you can separate those uh, heavier group 2A and those group 1A metals. Uh, so this not an exception, so therefore this is solid. And uh, before you go to the next step to get the complete ionic, you want to balance the equation. So here are two Cl, one Cl, so you put two here, and uh, you have two hydroxide and two Li, so therefore you put two here. So this is our uh, balanced molecular equation. Okay. Next, you uh, just uh, or rewrite uh, those. Uh, uh, we call them strong electrolyte, electrolyte or lights as ions. Uh, so what is a strong electrolyte? Strong electrolyte means uh, soluble ionic and a strong acid. So the first reactant is soluble to from the state is ionic, so therefore you rewrite. So in the first reactant, we have Li 
1 plus rn, we rewrite the disjoint solution to a plus, then from the coefficient subscript part, we get a 2, 2 times y is a 2. Then the opposite ion, the negative ion will be hydroxide. So you want to remember so the polyatomic ion, hydroxide, hydroxide is the OH1 negative. So therefore you, you, you still write them together as one ion. And uh, then you move on to the other reactant. So it's also aqueous, it's also ionic. So therefore you write them as ions. So you know you have Mg2 plus uh aqueous then you are you are have uh, the the opposite ion or the negative ion so the negative ion should be from the cl even though cl is a two uh so you just still write them as as cl one then what is the charge the negative one uh so that's also aqueous and how many of that you show the information on the subscript in the formula by put a two here uh, so this finish uh, rewrite or separate these are two reactants. So now you move on to the product. The first product is aqueous, is ionic. So therefore you write them as ions. So you have two Li one plus aqueous, then plus two Cl one negative uh, aqueous. So that finish rewrite the first product. For the second product, because it is solid, so never, never bother to rewrite something that is solid, or something that is liquid, or something that is gas. So this will be our, uh, so this equation, uh, uh, so that will be our complete uh, ionic. Equation. So the question is asked: uh, uh, Which of those species uh, appears in this equation? So obviously, let's check: Do we have Mg two plus equals? Yes. Do we have OH one negative equals? You do here the two. So here, just ask which species appears. So obviously, OH one negative also appears. Do we have Mg OH two solids? Yes. So here. So therefore we have that. Uh, so therefore the answer is E. I think that's the wording. All of the above, which means A, B, and C. So therefore the answer is E. Uh, very similar question. Uh, which of those species here, uh, so this is here on the list is, well, appears in the complete uh, ion equation uh, for this possible reaction. So you do a similar ion swapping. Uh, so you will take that K1 plus from the first reactant and make that combine with the, the ion from the second reactant, which is angle 3 by negative. So we'll put it here, and then we see the other possible product is to take the potent ion from the second reactant, which is Pb2 plus, with the I1 negative, so therefore we have Pb uh, I2. Then we decided the state, we know Pb I2 is insoluble, and K angle 3 is soluble, so therefore we have these two products. Then we balance the equation, we need two i on the left, so put a two here. That will give you two k, so therefore you need to put a two here. So two k, two k, then the two angle three balance, so this equation balance. Then as what we did on the last slide, you rewrite. Uh, so those, uh, uh, I will see that in a different way. So you rewrite a soluble. Uh, ionic compound as ions and also rewrite a strong acid if we have as ions. So these are the two types of substance when you translate this 
molecular equation into complete uh, ion equation. So this equation so far in the molecular, if you want to get the complete ion equation from the molecular, do this to rewrite. Rewrite a soluble ionic compound as ion, rewrite a strong acid as ion, um, don't rewrite anything else. So the first reactant is a soluble ionic, so therefore you rewrite. So you rewrite them as ion. And you have two K1 plus than aqueous, then you have two I1 negative aqueous. So this is what we mean by rewrite those uh, soluble ionic as ion. And uh, the second reactant is also soluble by uh, exam this aqueous state. Aqueous state means soluble. Ionic means you have metal in it or you have ammonium ion. So therefore this will be rewrite as Pb2 plus only one of this, uh, then plus two times or two of the nitrate NO3 by negative. So that finish rewrite these two reactants. Then you examine the two product. The first product is aqueous or aqueous, so that means also soluble. And then we have this K, which is the metal, so therefore this is the soluble ionic, and you write them as ion. So I will write on this line here. So therefore we have two K1 plus aqueous, then plus two NO3 aqueous. So this is the ion we get from the first product. For the second product, because the state is solid, or the state solid, liquid or gas, just keep as it is. Uh, don't rewrite as ion. So this is our uh, so this is our complete ionic. And uh, let me circle this complete ionic. And your question is, you want to examine. Uh, those choice complete ionic equation. So which of this appears in this equation I circled? The first choice is K angle three. Do we have K angle three? We have K, we have N3, but they are not together solid, so this is not. Do we have N31 negative? No. Do we have PBI2AQ? We have PBI2S, so no. Do we have PBIS? We have PBI2, but we don't have PBI, so therefore none of the above. So the answer is E. Okay, the other type of reaction is S, the base reactions. Uh, this is kind of our second type. Okay, so we talk about type of reactions, of chemical reactions. Uh, so the first type is the first type, the precipitation reactions. So this is kind of the second type. The, net, the order doesn't matter. I just want to, uh, to emphasize, uh, you know, we have different type of reactions. Or oh, as a base reaction also called neutralization reaction because as the base neutralizes each other's properties. One example of as the base reaction is a, a nitric acid reacting with calcium hydroxide, and this is our acid with actually strong acid and strong base reactions. Okay, so this example here is our strong acid. And this is our strong base. If you check, you will see the net ionic equation for any strong acid reacting with any strong base is very simple. That's H plus aqueous plus hydroxide aqueous produce H2O liquid. Um, 
uh, as long as the salt that the form in uh, is soluble in water. Acid based reaction in solution, acid ionized in water to form uh, uh, H plus ions. Uh, more precisely, the H from the acid molecule is donated to a water molecule to form hydronium ion H3O1+. Uh, most chemists use H plus and H3O plus interchangeably. Big uh, base uh, dissociate in water to form uh, OH vinylating ion. Uh, base, some of those bases, such as uh, ammonia and H3, that do not contain OH uh, uh, in it, but it can produce OH uh, while native ion by pulling H of the water molecule. Uh, so, in the reaction of an acid with a base, the H plus from the acid combined with the hydroxide from the base to make water. Uh, the, the cation from the base combined with the anion from acid to make the salt. So in general, acid base reaction uh, written in word is acid plus base produce salt plus water. Now this table is a list of common acid and uh, uh, we have the name on the first column, uh, so the top of the first one. Is a pure chloride acid. Then we have this second column in the formula. Then here are the common uses. Then this last column tell you the strengths. Um, so here we have some strong acid. We have moderate acid. Then we have weak acid. The next table will tell you the common bases. Uh, so same organized. Uh, so we have the first column are the name. Second column are the formula. And then here we have some common names, and then we have some use and strengths. So we have some strong uh, base and have weak base. Uh, so this example is the right equation for the acid base reaction. Uh, you want to write a molecular and also net ionic for the reaction between aqueous uh, HI or hydroiodic acid and aqueous uh, BaOH barium hydroxide. Uh, so what you do, very similar to what you did before because those are all so-called double displacement reaction. Uh, you write a molecular equation by uh, taking these two formula for the two reaction. So you write HIAQ, which is acid, plus BaOH2, which uh, is base. Then uh, swapping the ion, so the H plus from the acid Combined with hydroxide from the base produce water. Uh, when you see water, even though you, in this uh, uh, aqueous solution you have plenty of water, but you write water as liquid as as uh, as the state. So the other possible product will be the cation from the base anion from the acid produce the so-called salt. Uh, because you have this uh, water as liquid. Which you cannot rewrite as ion, so therefore you are not cancel out everything. So therefore, you have the chemical reaction for sure. Next, you want to balance the equation. Uh, uh, so, uh, so to balance the equation, you just examine those uh, atoms. Uh, let's see uh, the equation here. We have, uh, for example, we have I here. Uh, one and so that two, so therefore we put a two here. Uh, so then you will have uh, two H plus and two hydroxide, that means you'll produce two water. Okay, now the equation balance. Then you write them as uh, uh, this is how we get this uh, uh, two product. So now equation balance. Then you write uh, so this equation here, uh, before we see that, that will balanced molecular equation. So to to get the net ionic and obviously you had to you had to go through the the other uh, equation and you 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 write those uh, strong acid 
uh, an uh, sort of ionic compound as ion. Okay. So let's do that again. So we, are, we need to rewrite um, I go back uh, one of my way to to see that so we will rewrite a strong electrolyte as ions. Okay, so the first one, I'll put it here in the parentheses, what do we mean by strong electrolyte? Which means soluble ionic or SA. So what do I mean by SA is a strong assay. So the first one is strong assay. So therefore you are write that as ions, you write two H plus uh, aqueous plus two I one negative aqueous. And then the second rectangle is a base, but it is also ionic because you have metal in it. So ionic is soluble, so therefore you rewrite. You write Ba2 plus uh, aqueous, then 2OH one negative aqueous, aqueous. So then we say this is the water liquid, so never do write liquid gas or solid, so therefore keep it 2H2O liquid. The next product is uh, soluble, so this means soluble, we may have state aqueous means soluble. All right, so soluble. Okay. And it's also ionic, uh, so therefore you, you, you rewrite them as ion. So soluble ionic, just rewrite that as ion. And uh, you have one Ba2 plus ion, which in the state of AQ or aqueous, then plus two times I1 negative ion in aqueous. All right, so this will be our complete um, ionic. But your 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 question, question is get the net ion. Okay? To get the net ionic, what you do is cancel out those spectator. So where is the spectator? Spectator are the ion that on the left also on the right. So this is spectator. Okay. Uh, any other spectator? Yes, so this B A spectator. So now what do you have left over? will be uh, just take these two pairs of ion out. You have two H plus aqueous and plus two OH uh, uh, OH one negative aqueous and then practice two H two O uh, liquid. So then another you can simplify is the two and the two. So there are two here, two here, two here. So take those out, so finally you get is this. Uh, so finally you get, I will simply write the H plus AQ okay, plus, so that we all have two OH AQ then produce H two O liquid AQ. So this 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 is not six. That that is a O. Right, and this practice is the right molecular and net ion equation for the reaction that occurs between um, sulfuric acid and uh, lithium hydroxide. So you uh, uh, start with this two formula for the two reactants. Then you identify in the acid, you should have the H plus. And the negative ion for the H2SO4 is the SO4 two negative. Then you identify for the LiOH, the positive ion is the Li plus. The hydroxide is the OH1 negative. 
So then we will do the ion swapping. Okay, so we'll take a, 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 the potent ion from the first reactant uh, pair with wood. Pair with the negative ion from the second reactant, which means hydroxide. Uh, so then you will take the, uh, the other two ion uh, to a similar pairing. All right. So then you can just uh, write the formula for those uh, combinations. So, so obviously here is H plus with hydroxide. What you make is H2O. So therefore, this is uh, H2O. And the other one will be, so this is the H2O, the state for the liquid. So the other one will be, um, we have Li1, SO4, 2, so therefore Li is the subscript of 2, then SO4, just 1, don't need uh, to write the subscript of 1. So that's our preliminary molecular equation. And, and you write the equation on the balance. You have Li2 here, so therefore you put a 2 here. If you put a 2 here, that means you will have a, a 2H with 2OH. So 2H plus then 2OH1 negative. So if you have 1H plus and writing with 1OH1 negative, that will give you one H two O. So now I have a two over two, so therefore this will be two H two O. So once you have that uh, uh, molecular equation, so this equation I will circle that. Then I will balance the molecular equation. So this is the balance molecular equation. And uh, you want to get the net ionic, you have to go through the uh, the middle step, which is the complete ionic. So to get the complete ionic equation, remember what we did is a rewrite. Uh, so Let's just write them come more detail. Rewrite soluble ionic uh, compound as uh, ions and also rewrite strong acid as ions. Okay. So for this problem, we have well, the first reactant is H2SO4, it is a strong acid. So let me make a note. So the first reactant is strong acid. So then what do you think? If you have a strong acid, you should rewrite as I am. So therefore we have a two H plus aqueous. Then we'll have that negative ion, it is SO4, two negative aqueous. So the second reactant is a strong base, but also soluble ionic. So soluble ionic because air ion matter, so you rewrite. So here I have these two, you rewrite this uh, two type of uh, substance. So therefore we'll have two Li plus equals then plus two OH by negative equals. Okay, so that'll finish the two reactants. Then we move on to the product. So the product will be uh, the first one is liquid. So we'll keep that as it is. We write 2 is 2 liquid. Then the second product 
is a soluble ionic. Soluble ionic. Okay. So remember what we what, what we do. So this is soluble, this is ionic. Why ionic? Because lithium is metal. So now you rewrite. So therefore you write two L I plus one uh, AQ then SO4 two negative and AQ. Right, so this equation, if I circle this one, so this was our complete ionic. Okay. So this is our complete ionic equation here. So to get the net ionic equation, you cancel out the suspected ion. So who is the suspected ion? And we can say, uh, do we have uh, uh, SO4 on the left, SO4 on the right? Okay. Do we have Li1 plus on the left? Yes, on the right. So therefore, these two count out, and what you get is uh, uh, 2H plus equals plus 2OH. My negative H uh, produce two H two O liquid. So then you can simplify that more by taking the two out. So we have two here, two here, two here. So all of them has a coefficient of two. I'll do a lazy way. So take these two out, take these two out, take these two out. Now this will be your final. Uh, the net ionic. So this was our net ionic equation. Okay, so this uh, CRA 4.18 is uh, what are the spectral ion for the following reactions? So to do that, you again identify the ion in the two reactants. So you have Li plus in the first one and hydroxide in the first one. In the second one, you will have H plus and nit. Oh, that's strong. So that's the nitrate. Then we will do the swapping. So we take Li, compare with, sorry, so this will be angle three, one negative. Then other pair will be the H plus and hydroxide. So that will give you uh, H2O liquid and LiNO3. And uh, then you rewrite them as ions, or what I did before. Uh, I mean, you, 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 you rewrite those uh, strong electrolytes as ions and you identify the spectator. Okay? So we have to do that rewrite. And uh, you, you rewrite only soluble ionic and a strong acid. Okay. So only rewrite soluble ionic compound and uh, Strong acid, strong acid as ions. Okay. Uh, so the first reactant is soluble ionic. So this one is soluble ionic. So therefore, you write that as uh, Li one plus aqueous. Then OH by negative aqueous. The second reactant, so this guy is our strong acid. I call that SA. So therefore, you write that as H plus uh, aqueous by NO3 by negative aqueous. Okay, so then produce. So the first product is the liquid, so therefore you don't rewrite. So just keep that as H. Oh. 
so that as H2O uh, liquid, so H2O uh, liquid. The second product is soluble ionic. For example, we write that as Li no to Li aqueous. Oh, I thought there's two, there's no two. And then plus angle three, Y negative aqueous. So, so that's our complete ionic. And you will identify the spectator. So what are the spectator? Let's identify or highlight them on the left or on the right. So this on the left and also on the right. So that's a spectator. What else? This one and this one. So therefore our answer is B. Right, uh, titration. So titration uh, is one type of problem, uh, one type of technique you can use to determining the concentrations. For example, so in this uh, picture, you see there's a, a burette and a flask. So so HCl in this setting will be our uh, solution in this flask. In the flask, you also added the two drops of the indicator. Uh, so the indicator are those uh, type of compound. They change the color, depend on the pH of the solution. And uh, in the burette, we see we have uh, the so-called titrant, the other reactant. And uh, in this particular setting, example, so the high trend is the high sodium hydroxide. Okay. Uh, so then you can predict in what are the possible products. So obviously, it will produce water, then other one, NaCl aqueous. So you began to um, titrate. Let's see. How much HCl we have in the flask is 25.00 milliliter. Then we know the concentration of the acid, which is 0 0.0876 molar HCl. And then we notice uh, we don't know the concentration of the sodium hydroxide. So therefore, you want to find the, the molar concentration of sodium hydroxide. So to do that, we know the definition of uh, molarity is more over liters. So therefore, we have to know how much moles of uh, NaOH uh, when we uh, finish this titration uh, is used. Uh, so then we can uh, see how much more of NaOH use and how much volume use. Then we'll take the more of NaOH use divided by the volume of NaOH in liter get the molarity. So to do that, what you what information do we need is uh, what is the initial volume of that uh, solution in this burette? So if I just give you one example, see at the beginning we have 6.63 milliliter. So here in this uh, in in this in this uh, uh, beginning, then. At the end, we have uh, we used some of this NaOH. Then we have this much uh, left over. So then, what you, what you do? You will take the subtraction of the two number and get how much NaOH you use. Okay. So milliliter of uh, NaOH used equals. 25.68 minus 6.63, and that gives us, uh, that gives us, it's not, uh, uh, okay, so 19.05 
XML. Uh, so now you know the volume of uh, uh, the NA or is used to find the molarity. So you have to use liter and mole. So how we get the moles of NaOH reacted with HCl? We are going to use this equation and use more of uh, HCl. So we start with uh, 25.00 milliliter of uh, the HCl by using 1,000 milliliter, one liter. Uh, so then use the molarity. So one liter is 0 0.9, 0 0.9876 uh, more of HCl. Okay. Uh, and then let's uh, see. It's clear as it was. So that will equals how much moles of HCl. So how much more of HCl? Um, so you get uh, 0 0.02469 moles of HCl. So this molarity is an for angry OH. So therefore, you need more of, of angry OH. Angry OH. So right now you have more of HCl. What you do next is using the more of uh, HCl, then use the coefficient from this equation to convert the HCl into NaOH. So you can see in this equation, they both have the coefficient of one, one. So therefore, this is one, this is one. Now we know we have zero point zero. Two four six nine more of an A O H. So next, you just uh, convert this uh, milliliter into liters. Okay. Uh, let me see. I have a slide. I'm not. Uh, I don't. So therefore, let's do the conversion here. So if I have uh, 19.05 ml, then use 1000 ml is one L, so therefore you get 0 0.01905 L. So we have the volume in liter now, we have the moles now, okay? So next step is to take these two numbers divide. Okay, I am going to erase all those because we will see this on the slide. So we take 0 0.02469 divided by 0 0.019.05, and we get this molarity. So this is the technique of titration. And uh, in this example, we will do a similar. So we titrate uh, 10.00 milliliter of damper of HCl. We don't know the concentration. Uh, now this, we know the concentration of our base. So what do you do? You will use uh, the information of the base and uh, find out the more of the base. Then you convert the more of base into more of acid. Then you use the more of acid and volume of acid to find out the molarities. So that's our plan. Okay. Uh, so let me do the calculations here and uh, so that means uh, we need to get a new slide. Let me get a new slide. Okay, so where's that slide? Uh, screen. Here I'll get a screen. Uh, so if one get us get uh, that calculation, so uh, we'll use the information on that, right? So we have. Uh, uh, so what do we have there? 
is a twelve point five four milliliter of uh, NaOH. So we are first converting the milliliter into liters. Then we use the given concentration of the NaOH. Given concentration of the NaOH is uh, 0 0.100 0 0 molar, which means 0 0.00 uh, more of NaOH in one liter. So then next, you will use a more ratio between NaOH and HCl. So they are one to one ratio. So therefore, you get from this few step, you get 0 0.001254 more of HCl. Okay, so then tell you how much HCl do you used? You use 10.00 milliliters. You need to convert this into liters. So that means we have we used 0 0.01000 liter HCl solution. So now we can find out molarity. Uh, let's see molarity of HCl equals more of HCl divided by liter of HCl. And therefore we get 0 0.001254 more HCl divided by 0 0.01000 liter HCl. So 0 0.1254 capital M is our answer. And because of sig figs, we don't have three sig figs. So 0 0.125 is our final answer. And three sig figs. Uh, CRA to uh, 12.19. So we have a uh, 25.0 damper, uh, middle damper of H2SO4 to be neutralized with uh, uh, angle OH. Uh, so, what is the concentration of uh, H2SO4 if 35.0 milliliter of 0 0.150 molar angle OH is required to neutralize the acid? So, what do you do? You will just uh, uh, you need to write the equation first because you know you have to use a coefficient ratio to convert in between acid and base loss. So H2SO4 is our strong acid and our base is an AOH. So we know it produces H2 liquid then the salt will be an A2 SO4 equals then we need to balance the equation. Okay, what are the equation? Uh, what are the coefficient? Well, we have two NA, so therefore we need two, and so that make a two what? So the equation is balanced. Next, you are used. Uh, uh, in this example, the base information. So start with 35.0 milliliter and VOH, and then we're here, 35 and VOH. So 1,000 milliliter, 1 liter, then 1 liter is 0 0.150 moles uh, of NaOH. Then use coefficient ratio, so the the, the NaOH has a coefficient that H two SO four has a coefficient, so therefore you have twenty one. So we use this few and then we divide, then we get. Uh, so we get. Uh, A 
Okay, so we get uh, 0 0.002625 moles of H2SO4. And uh, next, we need to convert this milliliter of uh, H2SO4 into liters. So we write 2500 milliliter. Then we have 1000 milliliter, one liter. So that's 0 0.250 liters of uh, H2SO4. We have the liters, we have the moles, then we can calculate capital M molarity. So equals moles over liter of solution. So therefore that will equals 0 0.002625 over 0 0.0250 that divide and become 0 0.105 capital M is to SO4. So therefore the answer is B. Uh, so this is type of three. So type of three chemical reaction, the gas involving reaction, some reaction form a gas directly from the ion exchange. For example, K2S uh, reacting with H2SO4 produce uh, K2SO4 H2S. So by this compound, it is a gas. Uh, other reactions uh, form a gas by the decomposition of one of the ion exchange product into a gas and what the example for this is that if we take a key SO3, which is a platinum sulfide, reacting with the sulfuric acid, produces the platinum sulfate and a sulfurous acid. So sulfurous acid is one of the products come from the ion exchange. Then H2SO3 is not stable. So H2SO3 will decompose into H2 liquid SO2 uh, gas. Another example is uh, the sodium bicarbonate. Uh, so reacting with HCl produce sodium chloride, then uh, CO2 and, and H2O. So this table summarizes some of the common substances that contain uh, sulfide, so S2 negative or H, S1 negative, uh, or carbonate with CO3 negative or H, CO3 negative bicarbonate, then those sulfide, SO3 2 negative, and H, SO3 1 negative, or the ammonium ion. Of the compound have that uh, and is for one plus. And they will typically produce uh, gas directly or gas from decomposition, gas from decomposition, and gas from the uh, 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 from this uh, uh, decomposition. All right. Uh, so the the other pattern in the reaction is uh, the so-called redox. Okay, so far, we learned the precipitation, acid base, and gas involving reaction, all involving exchanging the ions in the solution. Another kind of reaction or type of reaction involving transferring electron from one atom to another, so these are called Redux reaction or oxidation reduction reactions. Many involve the reaction of a substance with uh, O2 gas. Uh, so one example is the uh, RN 
Fe metal reacting with O2, so that is what you don't want because that produces the thrust. And also the combustion reaction. So this example is the combustion of uh, hydrogen gas produce water. Uh, so typically also the reaction of metal with non-metal are the redox. For example, the following reaction, uh, sodium reacting with O2 gas or sodium reacting with chlorine gas the reactions involves metal reacting with non-metal, including oxygen. In general, reactions of metal plus non-metal involves the uh, conversion of free element into ions. Uh, so for example, you have uh, uh, sodium with uh, uh, O2. So before the reaction, they are free element. After the reaction, they become ions. And similar for the second reaction, uh, so therefore it's also uh, conversion of free element into ions. Oxidation reduction reaction, so to convert a free element into ions, the atom must gain or lose electrons. Of course, if one atom lost electron, another must accept the electron. Reaction where electrons are transferred from one atom to another are the redox reactions. Atoms that lost electron are being oxidized. Atoms that gain electron are being reduced. So this is why this uh, new gear comes from. Uh, lost electron uh, oxidized, so that's DO. Gain electron reduced, so that's the gear. In this reaction, uh, so you have two Na solid plus uh, Cl2 gas produce two NaCl. So Na has been oxidized, and Cl is being reduced. And uh, for some other reactions, you might not see clearly the electron transfer. So therefore, for reactions that are not metal plus non-metal, we need to have a method for determining how the electrons are transferred. Chemists is to assign a number for each element in a reaction called oxidation state or oxidation number that allow them to determine the electron flow in the chemical reaction. Even though they look like them, oxidation states are not always ion chargers. In general, oxidation states are imaginary charge assigned based on a set of rules. It will be the charge of or it is the charge of an atom or have if all the char all the shared electrons were assigned to the atom with a greater attraction for those electrons. Ion charges are real uh, real measurable charges. So there are a few there are five rules uh, you follow to sign the oxidation state for an uh, uh, atom. In, in some problems. Those rules are used in priority order of the appears. So use the first rule first if you can solve the problem. The first rule tell you free element have an oxidation state equal to zero. So for example, if I give this chemical reaction, then you can see there are two free elements. So Na is a free element, Cl is a free element. So therefore, uh, for both Na, it has oxidation state zero. For both Cl in this Cl2 molecular, you have uh, the oxidation state zero. So usually I use Na um, for, for whatever you want to find the, the oxidation state for. Therefore, I use Na equal to zero, Cl equal to zero, which means the oxidation state for the Cl element in this Reactant is zero uh, for each uh, atom of the Cl element. The second rule is the uh, monatomic ion has have an uh, oxidation state equals to their charge. Um, so in let's see, in this equation, in this chemical reaction, we have some of those elements, we have those ion. So what is the oxidation state? For zinc solid 
for being an atom zero from rule number one. So zero here for this AG. What is the our position state for AG one plus so this is plus one and this is plus two. So clearly can tell from the charge of those monatomic ion. Now if you don't have monatomic ion, you have polyatomic ion or you have a neutral compound, you have to use this rule three. So three A tells the sum of the oxygen state of all the atoms in compound equals zero. And so if you use if you need to use rule three to find the, the oxygen state for X numbers of elements, say three, two or three. To make sure you set up the equation according to this rule three, then use the next few rules to uh, find the, the oxygen state for x minus one number of elements, then substitute them back into the equation to find the oxygen state for the last element. Um, so what that means is, uh, for example, if you have uh, uh, an ACL, you want to decide what is the state for an A, what is the state for CL, you will set up the equation to use the chemical symbol for NA to represent the uh, oxidation state for NA, use Cl to do that for Cl. So therefore you have one NA, one Cl. So one times NA plus one times Cl equals zero. You have the equation. Then the problem in the equation, so you have two unknowns. So therefore for this particular example, so your X equals two. You have two unknowns. So you have to go to the next couple of rules to get one answer, then come back. You don't solve the problem, always use other rules to forget this rule three. So the next rule you can you encounter will be 4a. So 4a will tell you an a will have a plus one. So therefore you take an a plus one plus back into this equation plus one plus cl equals zero. So this means here, this equation. Then once you get this equation, you solve for CL, so therefore CL equals negative one. So this is the rule of using those rule number three. So three B is the sum of all the state of all, all the atoms for poly, for poly, uh, polyatomic ion equals the charge of the ion. What that means, if you have this nitrate, N was three by negative, you will set up the equation, you see one N and three O, you, uh, equals 91. So again, you have two unknown. So you have to use the next cover rule to find the, uh, one answer, then come back. So what do you do if you will say from rule five, you will get O2, O is negative two. So therefore, you, you substitute this O by negative two, get this equation. Then from this equation, now you only have one unknown. So you can solve this equation for n, so n is plus five. So then what are those uh, next two rules? So rule four, rule five. Uh, for rule four, you have four a, which means for those group one a, group one, group one or group one a metals, so you have plus one for their, for their uh, oxidation state. For example, n a is a group uh, uh, and in this compound, you even group one way. So you give an A plus one. If you have group of two A, then you will give them plus two. For example, you magnesium magnesium chloride. So that means in magnesium chloride, this magnesium MD has all sufficient states to plus two. Uh, so then you you have this rule five, have a table. Uh, this table has a priority. So one on the top will, will have the number first. Uh, so for example, if you have angle three, one negative, and you use rule uh, three B, you will have a equation. So we have N plus three O equals negative one. Then you have two variables, two unknown, you have to use this rule to find a uh, one answer. So you don't have fluorine, you don't have hydrogen, but you have oxygen. So therefore you will have this uh, negative two for oxygen. So therefore you replace O by negative two, now you have a new equation. So solve this new equation, 
So therefore, a y equals negative one of six. That will be plus five. So therefore, you get plus five. So this CRA it determined the, the all sedition states. So sometimes we call them all sedition states. Sometimes we call them all sedition member of the red element. So you have to set up an equation because rule number one, two cannot help you. So for the for the first one, you have two h. So that's equal to two times h plus one p plus four times o equals negative one. So now probably have three variables, three unknown. If you go to the next rule, uh, four don't have any answer. You have rule five. So from rule five. You have uh, h equals plus y, o equals negative two. So now you substitute these two into the equation, and you get two times plus y plus p and plus four times negative two equals negative y. So therefore, we have uh, two plus p minus eight equals negative y. That become p equals negative y plus eight minus two, so therefore p equals plus five. So the second one is uh, s o three two negative. So we have one s, so we just write y plus three times o equals negative two. So then from rule five we get O equals negative two. So therefore we have S plus three times negative two equals negative two or S minus or S equals negative two plus six. So therefore S equals plus four. So the last one, you have two n to n plus four o is a neutral compound equal to zero. So from rule number five, you get o is negative two. So therefore, you have uh, four times negative two equal to zero. And so therefore, you have two times a equals forty eight. So that means a equals forty four. Okay. So therefore, we have five. Four and four. So five, four and four, the answer is C. Which of the following is not, uh, which of the following is a redox? To be a redox, you will see the all this number for the element change. So therefore, we have to identify uh, the all this number for each one. A term in all the equations. So here h will be plus one, here negative one. What I write is what I write, what I write here. So all the number for each element in this equation. So plus one negative one, and plus one negative two plus one plus one negative two plus one negative one. So we don't see any change for any element. So this is not a non redox Okay, so let's see this one. Uh, so this one will be um, plus six, negative two, plus one, negative two, plus one, plus six, negative two, no change. So no change in any uh, a terms ox number. So therefore, it is a, not a redox. Not a redox. Okay. So let's see this is C. So this is plus one, negative one, plus one, negative two, plus one, negative one, plus one, negative two. No change. So non redox. So now this one, so we have uh, negative three and uh, plus one, 
and then zero and plus one get you two then here it will be uh positive five let you two and plus one so there are some change right so what has been changed let's see oxygen uh oxygen's uh ox member changed from zero to negative two and the ends ox member changed from negative three to positive five okay so what happens is uh, when you have the uh, ox little number change and you have a redox so therefore this is the redox so the answer is d okay now if you see the os this number change so all the number uh oxygen occurs when an oxygen when an atoms of the number of the state increases so obviously the truth so the redox reaction occurs when an atoms of oxygen state decreases during chemical reaction okay for this example and uh, we can see the number are in this way uh let's see what is our uh, oxidation so oxidation will happen for carbon because carbon carbon's number changed from negative four to a positive four what happened to oxygen so oxygen is reduced because it, its number reduced decreases from uh, zero to negative two so oxidation and reduction must occur simultaneously if an atom loses electron, another atom must take them. The reactant that reduces an element in another reactant is called the reducing agent. The reducing agent contains the element that is oxidized. Uh, the reactant that oxidizes an element in another reactant is called the oxidizing agent. The, the oxidizing agent contains elements that have been reduced. Uh, you see, in this uh, equation, uh, so Na is oxidized, Cl is reduced, therefore Na is the reducing agent and Cl is the oxidized agent. And uh, this example is using the oxidation state to identify the element that is oxidized and element that is reduced in the following direction. So let's first sign those uh, oxidation states for those uh, atoms. So Mg solid is zero. And we have plus one for H in water, then next is two for O in water, uh, plus two for Mg in magnesium hydroxide, next is two for oxygen in hydroxide, plus one for H in that, and zero for this H2. So from this signed oxidation numbers, we can see this oxidation number change. So for magnesium, it changed from zero to plus two. So the number increases, so for magnesium has been oxidized. The number for oxygen does not change, but for uh, for hydrogen, it changed from uh, plus one to zero, so the number decreases. So therefore, hydrogen has been reduced. Okay, so that's how we identify uh, what atom has been oxidized, what atom has been reduced by using the oxidation numbers. Okay, so this example is determined where the each reaction is the oxidation reduction reaction. For the oxidation reduction reaction, identify the oxidizing agent and the reducing agent. So the first one, we use the number we can see Magnesium before the reaction has zero oxidation number and so does O2. So after the reaction, they become plus two and negative two. So therefore we have uh, oxidation happen to magnesium, reduction happen to uh, oxygen. Uh, so therefore the reducing agent will be the magnesium solid and the oxidized agent will be the O2 gas. Uh, similarly, we can do for the 
direction B. Uh, so we sign the number, then we notice none of those numbers change. So therefore for B is not a redox. For C, we sign the number, so we have a zero for zinc before reaction. We have plus two for Fe before the reaction. After the reaction, zinc becomes two plus and Fe becomes zero. So therefore uh, zinc has been oxidized and Fe has been reduced, so therefore zinc will be our reducing agent, and uh, Fe is Fe two plus is our oxidizing agent. So this uh, this uh, CRA four point twenty two is uh, what is the reducing agent in the following reaction? If you sign the number for those air terms, you will say this is zero. as see this arcs number for each one air term. And then this is a plus four, so this is a negative two, so this is plus one for eight, so negative two. Then here you have plus two and uh, negative two plus one. So then here you will have, uh, uh, so this uh, all together should be, uh, Okay, so all together, so this is a negative two, negative two plus one, so then this is a plus uh, three. Uh, uh, so it seems uh, nothing happened to oxygen and hydrogen, but something happened to uh, zinc. So zinc go from zero to plus two. So zinc has been oxidized, and uh, also something happened to manganese, so Mn go from 424 to 423. So therefore, we can see zinc uh, has been oxidized. So therefore, zinc is the reducing agent. Okay, so therefore the answer is A. Okay, so that's the chapter the for electron nose part uh, two, and we finish the lecture of chapter four.